Atma Namaste. Let us ask for divine blessings to the Supreme God, Divine Father, Divine Mother, Guru Master Chokokswi. You can invoke to your own Guru. Mahaguruji Mailing, all the great, great ones, Holy Gurus, Holy Masters, Saints, Archangels, Holy Angels, all Devdutas, all spiritual helpers, all invisible helpers, Buddha Kwanin, Buddha Shakumuni, all the Bodhisattvas, the beings of light, our divine self, higher soul. We humbly invoke for your divine blessings, divine light, divine love and divine power. For divine peace, divine grace, divine guidance, divine mercy, divine forgiveness. For divine health, divine support, divine healing, inner healing and physical healing. For abundance and prosperity, for success, growth and progress, for manifestation of our life purpose, our greatness and all our wishes, dreams and desires. Thank you God for blessing us with the gift of life with the gift of breathing, seeing, hearing, speaking, tasting, touching, feeling, thinking, running, walking, taking action, loving. Everything that we do, it's a gift of you, God. We are blessed to be experiencing your divine miracles. It's a miracle, God, that I am still alive, safe and sound, when thousands and lakhs of people are dying all over the world today. Thank you, God, for your divine mercy, for your divine protection on all levels, through time and space, protecting us, our loved ones, our family members, our possessions, belongings, our life purpose, our greatness, protecting every wish, every desire, every dream of ours. Thank you for your divine mercy, for your divine forgiveness for all the mistakes, the sins, all the harm, hurt, pain, insult, wound that we have caused to others knowingly or unknowingly, consciously or unconsciously. I forgive everyone who has wronged me, who has given me pain, suffering, has wounded me, insulted me. I forgive you all, irrespective of who you are, on all levels, through time and space, on every dimension, on all dimensions and all directions, above and below. In the upper world, middle world, lower world. May all of you be completely and permanently be healed. May whatever is best for you come to you. May you be blessed by the Supreme God. May you live in peace, harmony, joy, happiness. May you have a wholesome life. I gracefully, humbly seek your forgiveness for all the mistakes I have done to you. I, the soul, I am, I am a part of God. I ask for your forgiveness. For all the mistakes I have done to you on all levels through time and space. Please forgive me. I bless you with God's divine blessings of peace, joy, happiness, prosperity, abundance and manifestation. 
I release you completely and permanently from all negative karmic connections, cords, bonds. May you be in peace. May you go in peace. May you be in peace. May you go in peace. May you be in peace. May you go in peace. Om Shanti 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 Om. May you be healed, healed, healed on all levels. Om Mani Padme Hum. Om Mani Padme Hum. Om Mani Padme Hum. Now cut all the negative karmic connections with these souls. All the energy cords cut, cut, cut. Disconnect, detach. I isolate my energies from all unwholesome, unwanted, illegal, unauthorized cords, connections and bonds. May I be completely and permanently healed on all levels through time and space. Om Shanti 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 Om. Lord God, Lords of Karma, that I have forgiven everyone, I am entitled to be forgiven. I humbly seek your forgiveness. Thank you for forgiving me on all levels through time and space. Thank you for blessing me with a wholesome life, with a spiritual life in divine order. A spiritual life means a pure life, a divine life. Thank you for blessing me with peace, with prosperity, with abundance, progress, with manifestation of my greatness, my life purpose, my dreams, desires and wishes, especially manifestation of my wish for the day. Make a wish. Thank you for keeping my life in divine order. Thank you for blessing me with goodwill and the will to do good. Thank you in full faith. So be it. So be it. So it is. Om. Amen. Amin. Prathastu. Now visualize a bright star above your head. Remind yourself that you are the soul, not the body. I am that I am. I am a spiritual being of divine intelligence, divine love and divine power. I am a child of God, connected with God, one with God and one with all. This is the truth, regardless of the capacity of the brain to experience the truth. I am that I am. I am a being of pure energy and spiritual light. I am in complete and permanent control over my body, my emotions and my thoughts. So be it. I, the soul, I am in complete and permanent control over my body, my emotions and my mind. So be it, so be it, so it is. Now let us flush out all the negativities from our system, from our auras, chakras, body, mind and soul by chanting Om. Those who want to chant Amen, you can chant Amen. Those who want to chant Amin, you can chant Amin. It will bring down the same vibration, divine energies to flush out all your negativities and raise your vibrations. Aum. Aum. Atma Namaste. 
Today I had not decided what to talk and what healing to give, but while we were doing the invocation, asking for uh, divine blessings, what came to my mind, I'm just sharing with you. Um, see, when I, whoever, whatever your name is, for example, I am Monrita, when I die and my body lies down on the floor, and the people come from the cremation center to take me. My family members will not say, Hey, pick up my wife. Hey, pick up my mother. Hey, take my mother. Hey, take my daughter. They will say, pick up the body. Take the body. Burn the body. Cremate the body. How did Mundrita become a body the moment she died? So then who is Mundrita? Is that body not Mundrita? Well, that's a question. That means the identity which is occupying that body was Mundrita. Mundrita is not alive, but the body is still present in front of you. When you cut your nails or your hair, what do you say? Do you say, do I say, I am cutting Mondrita? I don't say I am cutting Mondrita. If my body was Mondrita, then I would say that I am cutting mon part of Mondrita. But I say I am cutting a part of my body. I am cutting my nails. My Nails. Whose nails? Mondrita's. Who is Mondrita then? Is she the body? If she was the body, then you would say, you would not say that you are cutting the nails, my nails. Right? So, I, who am I? I am the essence of God, the energy of God who is occupying this body, who is making the body think who is making the body move, who is making the body feel. Giving you another example. I, Mondrita, suppose I am playing the role of a wife, a child, a mother, a teacher, a counselor, a healer. So my parents called me, call me daughter. My children call me mother. My Friends call me friend. My students call me teacher. But we all know that I am Mondrita. I am just playing different roles. I am playing the role of a teacher, a mother, a, a daughter, a wife. I am playing those roles. So I, the soul, the speck of God, when I come into the body, it's, you know, like, you know, like the soul is actually the tenant. And the body, it is renting the body for this lifetime to occupy this body and make the body think, make it think, make it speak, make it do actions. The moment that body, which is, you know, you are occupying, that soul is occupying, it dismantles, it breaks, it disintegrates, it dies, it has no life. Then the soul leaves it and the body remains like that. What does the soul do? The body is cremated. What does the soul do? The soul then looks for another new body to occupy. Why? When there was Big Bang, suppose this is the, uh, you know, God's energy, which is like the sun. It split and small specks came out. Those specks, God's, those specks of God's energy became planets and the sun and when those gradually oh, no, Shoma please switch off your uh, when when those specks of energy condensed cooled down it became planets same way every living being is that same speck of God that same energy of God and 
it has taken birth because it is god's divine plan on mother earth and that over there it's like a school when you go to a school a child goes to class 1 class 2 class 10 does 12th graduation and phd so in every year the child is learning something new similarly every lifetime the soul is taking birth on mother earth to learn new lessons yes the soul does not take birth to learn history geography all those that is the body which takes you know the the mental body the mental body takes that uh, learning but the soul learns the lessons of life and how does the soul learn the lessons of life when you have a naughty child your children are very naughty or they are giving you lot of trouble all your life you are being harassed by their problems they are a pain in the neck or maybe your husband or your wife is you know giving you lot of pain lot of problem lot of trouble you are going through those sufferings to becoming more patient more tolerant more compassionate when you go through pain you become more compassionate more you experience what is true love you experience when you experience trauma you feel and sense the trauma of other people and then when you see others going through trauma you yourself feel like helping that person so you have la- learned love you have learned compassion you have learned how to help people you have learned how to be compassionate friendly helpful supportive so these learnings that are happening it is happening with every experience that we have in our life and that is why we are born because in every lifetime after the body dies what the soul takes back is not the clothes it's not the house and the properties or the belongings that you have it takes back all the knowledge all the wisdom it has acquired and all the experience which it has gained in this lifetime that is what the soul carries back so when the soul takes birth in a new body the soul is already having the wisdom of the previous lifetime and the previous and the previous so if the soul has taken birth 100 times already then maybe when it takes birth in a body it is a 1 year old baby or a 5 year old baby but the maturity of the soul is 100 lifetimes similarly maybe that little baby's grandfather who is 90 years old but the grandfather's soul has taken birth only 9 times so he is only probably in class 1 i mean the soul is in class 1 only the fifth lifetime so that soul though his body's age will be 95 but the soul will be a young soul immature soul so you will see that this young boy will be much more matured much more composed than this grandfather so the real age that we have is not the age of the body but the age of the soul so in every lifetime just like you will see a class 1 child will do lots of mistakes whereas a class 11 child will do less of mistakes a person who is doing phd will do minimum mistakes in his whatever he is learning in school college or his uh, academics similarly we do mistakes when it is a young soul immature soul a baby soul a baby soul will do so many mistakes that is accepted when a mother has a newborn baby every time the baby is asking for mother's feed does the mother become impatient no every time the mother uh, child uh, the baby wets its napkins does the mother get offended no why because you know it is a baby the baby doesn't know so when it is a soul which is a baby soul if that baby soul is doing mistakes as a matured soul if you are a matured soul if you are a old soul if you are a grown up soul is it more older than that soul is it not your duty to forgive is it not your duty to understand and you know just look you know overlook all those mistakes is it not your duty to help that soul grow up maybe by counseling maybe by healing maybe by explaining maybe by compassion love 
the biggest instrument that god has given the biggest instrument of the most powerful instrument that can change everything in life and everything in this world is the instrument of love only love can heal everything in 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 life everything in the world you know when my spiritual teacher all that i have you know consciously learned is from my spiritual teacher so uh, when my spiritual teacher he was not from india when he came to india and you know he met some people in bombay uh, it was in the initial years when he came and when he heard that you know there are these mafias who come and extract money from the uh, wealthy people businessmen and all he was very amazed and this was long long back and then he asked one of the students in whose house he was staying he was also a businessman and uh, they were quite wealthy so uh, my teacher asked um does this mafia come to you also he said yes so do you give money they said no then he said don't they harass you they said well there is a way to um, avoid that harassment so uh, my teacher was very you know keen to know they said look people uh, they they um, resist in giving the more they resist the more mafias what are they doing they are having a negative action they are doing with a negative intention the more you resist that the more they will come out powerfully towards you they said when they come with love with compassion with you know counseling with healing we are embracing them we are talking to them pleading them and you know with these beautiful ways they never come and extract money from us they let us go so they, so they don't harass us this was a life testimony so it is only love that can heal all problems of life so the more love energy the more love you send to people who are negative to people who are uh, you know troubling you bothering you believe me i vouch i have experimented this many many years believe me try it out for a month keep blessing with god's love you are just a channel visualize god's love is pouring down and you are passing that love to those people who are bothering you every day you do it for 5 minutes for one month come back and tell me whether those people have changed or not whether their attitude towards you have changed or not maybe there will be a pain in the neck for others but they will change their attitude towards you so this is what real real healing is you can heal with love you get healed with love don't you when you're filled with love of people when you're filled with love of your kith and kin when you're filled with love of your parents your spouse don't you feel complete don't you feel whole don't you feel healed if that is what you feel that is what you give others will feel healed others will feel wholesome others will heal and when it is going from you whatever you give comes back to you many many times that is what comes back to you then if you are giving out love in abundance you are giving out love love will come in abundance to you and your life will be healed so in every lifetime no matter what mistakes we have done no matter what uh, you know negative karmas we have done what is karma karma is every negative thought that you have every, every negative word that you say every negative action that you have done it has created a you know a score you have scored every positive word has given you a score every positive thought has given you a score every positive action you have scored both you are scoring if your negative score is higher then what happens is it is like you know you have taken loan from the bank so much of loan it's called karmic loan all negatives you have to pay back you have to neutralize and diminish that to zero you have to neutralize that to zero how do you neutralize you go through pain and suffering the pains and suffering you have given to people you go through those pains and suffering when you go through those pains and suffering then your balance negative balance starts coming down 
So there are two ways that you can neutralize all the negatives you have done in all your lifetimes. What are the two ways? In Chinese, we call it yang and yin. What is basically yang and yin? Yang and yin is you do not do what you do not want others to do unto you. So if you don't want others to hurt you or harm you, you do not hurt, you do not harm. You are preventing yourself from doing something negative. That is one. On the other hand, you keep doing good so that good comes back to you. So here you are improving, increasing your good score or good balance. And here you are preventing yourself from doing negative. So this gets neutralized. This get, The score gets balanced with the more positive you create. It gets balanced and the negative goes down. You have stopped creating any more negative. So in this lifetime, you do not really know how much negative score you have of all your past lifetimes. You might have been in, uh, you know, in the um, in Hitler's uh, one of the soldiers in Hitler's uh, team. You might have chopped hands and legs of people. You might have been a butcher. You might have uh, slaughtered so many people, so many animals. You might have, uh, you know, done so many evil acts. You have been a police, police. Maybe you have been into crime branch, and you have punished so many people. You have shot so many people. You might have done so many negative karmas in the past. You might have been a king. You have conquered, you know, land after land, killing people after people. You know, uh, thousands and lakhs of people. You do not know. But what we know is what we are doing in this lifetime. So what we can do in this lifetime, since I am aware, I am conscious. Let me plant seeds of goodness. So many. That it neutralizes all my past negative scores that I have. How is it possible? Suppose, for example, I always take it like this. Our life is like a field. The field is rugged and rough. Why? Because it has not been taken care of. So my life is rugged and rough. So there are a lot of bushes and maybe cactus growing, which are all the negatives that I have done in the past. So all those are there scattered here and there in that field. Now, when I become aware, oh, this is my life. Okay, my life is this field. I possess this. It belongs to me. Let me do something about it. So what I do, I start watering it. I start planting fertilizer, giving fertilizer. I start making that field, that earth rich. And I bring lots of seeds of fruits and flowers. And I start sowing those seeds in abundance. And then I start giving water every day. I see that there is proper sunlight, proper air, proper water. It's getting nourished properly. So those seeds come out as saplings. The saplings grow into plants. The plants grow into trees. And then it starts blooming. So maybe there were 20 bushes in that field. But I have planted 100 flowers, plants, uh, flowering pl plants and 100 fruit, you know, uh, trees, fruit trees. So these 200 that have grown up and it is it starts blooming, giving flowers and fruits. Will that little cactus, will those little bushes have any power? Your field has become rich. You've nourished it. You've nurtured it. You have planted good seeds. You have nurtured and grown those. Automatically, you have a beautiful garden. When you have created a beautiful garden, what are you going to attract? You will be attracting butterflies. You will be attracting rainbow. You will be attracting beautiful, you know, angels. As long as it was rugged, it was dirty, it was people were coming and dumping into it garbage. It was attracting flies and dirty uh, insects because it was dirty, it was impure. So it is never too late, my dear friends. Even if your body's age is 50, 20, 10 or 100, the day you realize the day you realize and you decide, I'm going to change my life, my rugged life which is there, I'm going to convert it into a beautiful garden. 
from that day onwards you will start attracting positive results you will start attracting butterflies you will start attracting beautiful scents beautiful you know vibrations so start sowing good seeds good seeds of good thoughts good words good action think good about people do not judge people we have a tendency the judge is only one in this universe and that is god only god can judge what we are doing nobody else has the authority to judge our right and wrong what a supreme court judge is giving what a high court judge is giving or what any of you or i am giving that oh you are right or you are wrong it is only my opinion it is only the opinion of the judge that does not mean that what he is saying may be 100% true the person may be a very pure person maybe by mistake he has done a crime maybe he was compelled to do that crime that does not make him a completely bad person that is god is supposed to judge him not i i can form my opinion you are bad but that is my opinion so if somebody criticizes you if somebody tries to put you down if somebody humiliates you if somebody insults you just brush it out from your aura do not take it in because you may very politely nicely tell them well that is your opinion but that does not mean that i might be the same i have a different opinion about myself i have been true i have been honest i have been genuine so if you if your opinion is i am bad you please keep your opinion with you what happens in reality in the invisible world is when you spit to the sky it comes back to you so when you reject that opinion when you reject that criticism when you reject that negative energy which that person was trying to throw to you you did not take it you did not accept it the moment you did not accept it it will bounce back to that person but the moment you accept it and you react to it oh how dare you told me i am bad no i am not this what happened he has thrown a energy bullet you are also throwing energy bullet obviously there is a energy war another thing is in your mind when you are criticizing mentally you have in the invisible world mentally you have actually created a war mental war energy war is already there and i had told you whatever happens in the inner world it comes out and happens in the physical outer world so if i am you know talking to you like this in the inner world i have already had this session in the invisible world in the spiritual world this has already happened it is only manifesting or materializing in the physical world so in the inner world whatever we create that is with that is what manifests in the outer world so when you are visualizing that you are you are at peace you are doing good action you are having a good life you attract why do you attract positive things from the universe and it manifests because in the inner world you are creating that that whole scenario you are creating that film in that inner world automatically that energy world will attract those energies to manifest that so even if you have a war in the inner world how dare she has told like this to me i am going to do this i am going to you know abuse her i am going to you have already fought in the inner world it will manifest in the outer world and you have created a karma by your thoughts then you are creating a karma by your action double karma negative karma you are creating so you are planting more cactus you are planting more shrubs and bushes in that field instead of making it a beautiful garden so we should be aware what we are supposed to do and how we can change our life look every day may not be that i am giving you a physical healing but i am a vocal healer so through me god heals people by my words by my you know whatever god wishes to communicate to transfer because god is silent but he uses channels like me to pass on the message what he wants so every session even if physically though i am having 
at the moment i'm having my crystal to heal of you, all of you but god governs every session that happens so maybe he will not use i don't know what he will do whether he will physically make me heal you today or maybe he is using you know verbal energy to heal you so you know all the karmas that we have performed in our past lives it manifests it shapes up our life for example you know usually what we have studied in as per theosophy and all as we keep on studying understanding our wisdom grows our perception becomes clearer and we start understanding we have more insights deeper insights and understand life from a deeper perspective so what i have understood is that in those who are doctors and healers mostly they have been warriors in the past they have created so many probably killed people maybe harmed people intentionally or unintentionally whatever but in this lifetime they are compelled to save people's lives they are compelled to um, serve people healing their lives because maybe they have been soldiers policemen etc so that is their role in this lifetime people who have who are teachers uh, teaching maybe they have been very bad students in the past so they are compelled in this lifetime to teach to preach so the moment they start teaching and preaching what happens is they have a deeper understanding of what they are saying and doing so automatically it comes into their life that they start following those i'm talking about a good successful teacher there could be many so whatever roles we are playing in our life it has a connection with our past lives and that past lives whatever we have done those were the seeds that we had planted today what is the present moment what is happening in our life are the fruits of the seeds i have planted in the past so if you want to change your future if you want to change your destiny tomorrow you want roses in your garden won't you plant seeds of rose today won't you start nurturing them watering them taking care of them then you will have the rose tomorrow in your garden so if you want a prosperous life for example tomorrow if you want a successful life tomorrow what do you need to do you need to plant the seeds of prosperity and success how do you plant practically now how do you plant you make people prosperous you help people to get jobs you suppose you know it's a poor person who has done some pottery you buy those things even though maybe you don't need it maybe you have enough but the moment you are buying it and giving that money money is prosperity energy in the form of condensed prosperity energy in the form of uh, dollars or notes or rupees or coins whatever when you are transferring that prosperity energy you are giving out prosperity energy you are helping that person to become prosperous what are you yielding in your life you are yielding prosperity in your life when you are helping people you are becoming entitled to receive help from god through people god will not directly come he will use mediums so if you want success help people to succeed support them to succeed success will come to you so this is how you can change your tomorrow by changing your today it is in your control it's in our control our life is in our control if we control the present we can con- our uh, future will automatically uh, be as per i wished as per i wanted as per i dreamed isn't it true that when a child dreams of becoming a pilot think of abdul kalam he dreamed that he would be you know how did he actually manifest it he had to take action he had to plant those seeds he had to nurture it he had to take action and then he manifested it so first thing is to dream to imagine it's the work goes on in the inner world the moment you imagine the moment you think the moment you desire you are creating that whole result you are planting the seeds of the 
rose that you want in your garden, you are planting that seed, you're visualizing that rose, you're desiring that, and it starts, the work starts in the inner world, it starts and it finally results, gives you the result of it. So the more we focus into all the problems that we have had in our life, all the traumas, if you keep on focusing, oh, why have I gone through so much of pain? Oh, why uh, every time I am the victim? Oh, why, you know, when you're always complaining, what are you doing? What seeds are you planting in the field? You are seed planting the seeds of uh, struggle, suffering, pain, uh, you know, dissatisfaction. These are the seeds you're planting. So if you're planting those seeds, what fruits do you expect? Obviously, it will attract more of disappointments, more of anger, irritation, more of failures, more of suffering, more of struggle, more of pain. So whenever we have a challenge, whenever we have a problem, instead of focusing into that problem on that negative thing, don't give more energy to that negative incident. Don't add more molecules. Don't add more atoms, protons, neutrons. You are empowering that. The moment we get angry, for example, I give birth to a small energy molecule which is filled with anger. That is like a small anger monster. The more angry I become, the more I am putting in energy, adding more molecules, means I'm more feeding that anger, uh, angry monster, that monster filled with anger energy. So every time I'm angry, I'm feeding it. So it starts growing, 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 growing. One day, that monster becomes huge, bigger than me. Then I have no control over it. Then that anger monster is controlling me. Every time I'm getting angry, you say, I don't have control. I don't know why I do like this. Because that anger monster which you have given birth, you have fed, you have grown is giving you, now is controlling you, your life. So the more you criticize people, the more you are jealous, the more you are envious, the more hatred you have, the more you can't tolerate others' success. What are you doing? You are bringing disaster in your own life. Nothing is happening to them. You are creating obstacles in their lives. And the more obstacles you are creating in their lives, there are more obstacles in your life. You will not be able to manifest your dreams, desires, success, growth, prosperity, abundance. Because that is what you are planting seeds. That's what you are throwing out. That is what will come back to you. So it's an alarming time now to change your life. Let us start changing our life. Let us start praying and purifying our thoughts, our emotions, our words, and our actions. I would like you to close your eyes. Tap your heart with your left hand. Tap your crown, your head, top of the head with your right. Tap it. Activate these uh, two centers, energy centers, the heart and the crown. This is human heart. This is God's heart from where God's energy comes in. Close your eyes. Take your hands in the blessing position. Visualize Mother Earth in front of you and all the 7 billion people. And pray to God. God, make me an instrument of your peace. Make me a channel of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me bring love. Where there is despair, let me bring hope. Where there is sadness, let me bring joy. Visualize beautiful golden energy going into every person's aura, chakras, home. And it is healing everybody. There is love flowing in. There is peace flowing in. There is happiness flowing in. And you are giving out that. You are giving. Where there is darkness, let me bring light. Where there is Lack, let me bring abundance. Where there is poverty, let me bring prosperity. Where there is suffering, let me bring healing. Where people are stuck, 
let me manifest goodness. Where there is cruelty, let me bring compassion. Where people have wronged, let me bring mercy and forgiveness. Let all these energies of peace, happiness, joy, oneness, prosperity, abundance, manifestation, hope, faith. Where there is doubt, let me bring faith. Faith. All these beautiful energies are flowing through you from God and passing on to all the 7.8 billion people on Mother Earth. So if it is flowing through your life, obviously you have it in your life. You will have it in your life because it's going through you. You will possess it. God, make me a channel of your divine blessings, divine healings and divine manifestation. Now visualize Mother Earth Visualize this golden energy flowing from your hands, from the bottom of your feet and the bottom of your spine going deep, deep, deep down into Mother Earth. The core of Mother Earth, the crystal heart of Mother Earth is wounded, it is bleeding. May Mother Earth be healed with this soothing, loving energies of God. Visualize sparkling white light flowing into Mother Earth and healing the bleeding heart of Mother Earth. May Mother Earth be rejuvenated, regenerated, revitalized. May Mother Earth be healed. May Mother Earth be blessed with good water, good earth and good air. May everyone bless your family members, your loved ones, may everyone in your family be blessed with soothing, healing energies of God. May everyone be blessed with divine love, divine intelligence, divine power. May everyone be blessed with healing energies, with prosperity and abundance, abundance of love, abundance of healing, abundance of health, abundance of everything. May everyone have a wholesome life, a healed life. May everyone be healed physically, energetically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, financially, and socially. Socially is, may all, everybody's relations get healed. Visualize in the whole world, there is no war, there is only peace. Everyone is like brothers. Every country is helping each other for the growth and betterment. Every country has a united oneness feeling. Everybody feels one with all. Everybody is one with God and one with all. All the countries are helping each other, supporting each other. Like the barter system that used to happen earlier, everybody is exchanging what one country does not have, the other country is supporting it with those. There is wholesome exchange of only wholesome, healthy, positive energies and materialistic substances, services, health, healing, protection. May Where there is insecurity, God, let me bring the energy of protection. May we bring security. So visualize all the insecure people, all the people who are filled with fear, trauma, pain, suffering, insecurity, that God is using you and passing on the energy of security and safety into everyone. Now put your hands down. Visualize a bright light above your head, which is the light of your soul. Connect to your soul. Pray to your soul. To empower you. 
to bring down love of God, healing of God, prosperity of God, abundance of God, progress of God, security of God. And then tell yourself, I am love. I am joy. I means the soul which is filled with God's energy. God's energy has got love in it. Happiness, peace, joy, success, growth, abundance, prosperity. And that is what you are. You are God's energy. So you have it within you. So I am peace. I am prosperity. I am love. I am security. I am happiness. I am manifestation. I am abundance. I am healed. I have a wholesome life. I attract only holes, only what is wholesome and positive in my life. Thank you, God, for your divine blessings, for your miraculous healings and your miraculous manifestations in my life. Thank you in full faith. So be it, so be it, so it is. Om, Amen, Amin, Tathastu, Tathastu, Tathastu. You may open your eyes. Thank you very much for giving me an opportunity to serve all of you. May you be healed completely and permanently on all levels through time.